get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, Einstein Bagels, TerraCycle, we're talking about TerraCycle a little bit, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Um, Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person, small group VIP events for top entrepreneurs all over the country, including many events in the e-commerce industry. Uh, Rise25 hosted events this past year in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York, Sonoma, Las Vegas, probably more I'm missing. Uh, (laughs) If you see yourself, and I know Matt does, uh, you know, the value of immersing yourself with other top entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate to get your business to the next level, inside or outside of your industry, uh, go to rise25.com and contact us and find out where our next event is going to be. I am excited uh, today. This has been like a long time coming, maybe like three years coming. I don't know. Today we have the co-founder of <laughs> DMAC Media and co-founder of uh, Pila Case, Matthew Bertulli. Pila Case is the world's first compostable phone case. So, you know, I didn't know this until Matt and I were talking, which there's billions of cases produced every year. Um, that's like equates to maybe 400 million pounds of plastic that will probably end up in the ocean or some dumpster or some landfill. And so it's amazing. You guys are disrupting the, the phone case uh, mm-hmm. industry. So that's really cool. We'll talk about that. And DMAC Media is an award-winning e-commerce products and services company. Over a decade, uh, they're based in Toronto and they are one of the largest Magento Gold Partners. I think you talked to them really early on. So I wanna hear that oh, story. Yeah. And one of the top, uh, not only uh, in Canada, but globally, and a Shopify partner as well. Their 90-person staff provides e-commerce platform technology and managed services, which we'll talk more about, to retailers, manufacturers, wholesale distributors, selling either direct to consumer or business to business. And the whopping, um, I mean, you guys are moving the needle in the economy. They help their clients process over $500 million per year. So, Matt, thanks for joining me. Yeah, man. Thank you. And of course, I'm drinking a glass of water while you're that's actually totally going to cool. cue me up, right? That's, <laughs> that's how it always works. <laughs> so what I love that what you talked about is you have like an automation set in place. So for instance, like if it, a certain metric gets below a certain amount, you'll get, oh, you, you'll, email you'll get an email. So talk about oh, yeah. what, what, when, at what threshold do you get email notifications for some of these metrics? What are you measuring? So the, the reason I do that is because there are certain metrics that in the e-com and retail world people get obsessive over. It's so like the big one being conversion rate. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's one of DMAG's best lead sources is people like, hey, can you help me improve my conversion rate? I'm like, yeah, sure, but like we're going to have to unpack it because it's, it's not one number. Um, but I think – so what I do there is like if the site falls below – so if PILA falls below 3.8%, so total conversion rate – Right in a given day, I get a notification. Otherwise, I don't look at it ever, which blows people away. They're like, and, and the crazy thing is, is like we do a lot of optimization work. But as I like, what's the site converting at? This big thing that a lot of marketers like to talk about. I never look at it unless it hits a hits a, a threshold. Right then, I know something broke. Because yeah. I it's I just, just an indicator that something <laughs> broke. It's a leading indicator and it yeah. shouldn't be used as a lagging indicator. And I think most people use it as a lagging indicator and they get obsessive over it. Um, you know, I, 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 we look at email, daily email acquisitions. So like if it falls below a certain number, um, I'll, I'll get a, I have like a little alert system set up. And there's lots of ways to do these. Like, um, like we use grow.com, which is just like a nice, it's like a domo type tool, right? So it's like a BI tool. You can just pump data into it. Yep. So I pump all the data into that. I look at it and, I take a quick glance, and if nothing is below, and I don't, I don't do anything with it. Like that's, you know. And then there are certain things that we look at frequently. I, there's very few numbers that I would recommend people look at daily, right? Um, in terms of, you know, if you want to be systematic and methodical in your approach to building a company, uh, looking at your numbers daily can probably, yeah. it's more likely to drive you insane than it is to help yeah. you make better decisions. Yeah. 
talk about some of those leading indicators. So, because like you said, a lot of people are using them as lagging, not leading. Yeah. So you mentioned conversion, email yep, acquisition. What else do you? Uh, we look at how many reviews we get on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So that is a, for us, we've figured out that's a great leading indicator um, to how well we're going to do a month from now. Mm. Um, because the more reviews we get, and obviously they got to be good ones, the more reviews we get, the higher chance our word of mouth is. So uh, reviews are a good leading indicator for organic and direct traffic 30 days out. Mm. I can't directly tie them together, but I can look at them, you know. It's a good my, indicator, yeah. Using my human brain and look at both sets of numbers, and I can see that, like, the more we get, the more our traffic goes up. So let's just keep pushing reviews, um, word of mouth. And that's big in across all different channels, arenas. Is there a certain methodology used to encourage reviews? Yeah, I mean, Yachtpo is, is the tool we use. Honestly, like, the methodology is ask. Yeah. Like, crazy how many people don't ask for reviews and or, and don't do don't have a system for it or right. like a process or like an incentive plan or anything you know like and i think that the reviews industry and what people talk about when it comes to like product reviews or brand reviews is is lift on site so conversion just bang on it absolutely affects conversion not going to deny that um but the thing that we've discovered and is and that we really focus on is is more reviews is equal to more traffic 30 days out. And that is unequivocal, like it, it is just, it works and it works well. So we push hard there. Um, and then the other one we track, which is more like very manual and, and human intensive, is how many uh, user generated photos do we get on Instagram? Wow. And that's a great leading indicator for how we're doing with delivery. Um, so like the and faster the community. product gets out there the, and the community, like, are we building community and are people raving about us and talking about us and are they pushing the movement forward? And that's a good, uh, indicator that it's moving forward. It's crazy. None of this shit is sales, right? Or like it, it sales is a lagging indicator. So like it right. doesn't inform me about what's going to happen in the future. Just that's what, what people happened. are looking at though. No, they're yeah. obsessing over it. And What's the biggest mistake people are looking at as far as their metrics? That oh, conversion, man. Like people obsess over site-wide conversion rate instead of like unpacking it into repeat visitors, new visitors by channel. Um, and I think the biggest mistake everybody makes right now is obsessing over attribution. So like where am I spending money and where am I getting it? Like if I run Facebook ads, is are they profitable or are they not? Um, every, every, every channel is claiming – the wrong amount of revenue uh, and attribution models are incredibly complex. Like Avinash Kaushik from Google has written extensively on attribution in, in digital and how it's next to impossible. And like, I looked at that as just a strong signal that I shouldn't even try. Like if he, he's like the head brain of analytics at Google and he, he doesn't like it. So what am I going to do? Uh, so I, I, uh, I sort of look at, we look at our total marketing spend as a percentage of revenue and, and if it's going up and it stays within a certain ratio, I don't really fret over which channel is taking claim, you know? Um, and then if I have to, I will like, if I really want to test to see the impact of like, you know, uh, YouTube ads, I'll just shut them off for a day or two and watch what happens. Right. Like, you know, and that's, but that, that only gives you like a, a little time window too. So I think, the biggest mistake is definitely obsessing over attribution. That is a that's a that's a mess. Yeah, Matt. First of all, thank you. This is if people haven't been taking notes fast enough, like me, I don't know if you can see this. This is like, uh, <laughs> um, then this has been truly amazing. I have uh, two last questions, but um, Shoot. I want people to check out. They should check out if we haven't talked about it. Uh, Pelacase.com. P e l a c a s e case.com to check out the um fully compostable cell phone cases in iphone uh, iphone android and check out their mission uh you guys are doing amazing stuff with that and you can check out dmacmedia.com if you do have an e-commerce brand and you know you need to get to the next level with what the services they have check them out obviously uh if you've listened to any of this 
Uh, Matt knows what he's doing. <laughs> the team knows what they're doing. Um, sure. it, it's D E M A C Media dot com. And um, so, Matt, I always like to ask, um, since it's Inspired Insider, what has been the uh, lowest moment um, that you had to push through? And on the flip side, what's been a proud milestone that you were able to hit? Because that's why I loved you talking about the tooling and that stuff. Because people see, oh, you make a whatever it is, people make a million dollars or whatever amount they make, 10 million or 20, and they don't realize you had to, they had to actually build out the supply chain. You had to get them at source of materials. The guy probably spent like five, six years trying to develop the product. Yep. And then they have to pay 10,000 per the tooling, ship it over from China, put it into, you know, there's all these pieces that get put into actually, then you get a product and then you can actually, then you have to, to educate and talk about the mission and then yeah. someone buys the product. All this yeah. stuff happens. It's like the iceberg, right? There's this yeah, little okay. tip you see above and then there's this huge mammoth iceberg underneath that actually you only see the tip though. So thanks for sharing all those those steps and those details. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think um, – so just to answer – like to the – there hasn't been a whole lot of like what I would call truly low moments. Mm-hmm. Right, there's there's so many bumps in the road though. Yeah, that I think for me that's that's the frustrating part. Is like every day you're gonna take at least one punch. <laughs> right. You know, uh, they they tend to. I, I think that it's I just don't. Analogy. I just don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't just picture you with like a black eye every day. Just yeah, that's it. Man. You're just gonna take a punch, you know, and it's like I. I the things that I, I just I don't like losing people like when they leave whether it's for good reasons or bad I hate it when people leave um, I feel like I've let them down um, but that I also know that that's just part of life maybe talk I, about I, that I, for a second because that yeah. that is a theme in what you do which is people right building a team mm-hmm. and people and and you've had I know um, I when I did my research there's people who like some of the first ten or twelve people in DMAC are still with the company, you know, yeah. years later, decade later, or whatever it is. So, talk about maybe uh, a low moment there, but like a retention. How do you, you what things do you do to build a culture in, in so people want to actually stay and be there? Yeah, I, I talked a lot about that. I saw so on actually on Jason Gaynor's podcast in the first season, I talked with Tony uh, Guerrero yeah. from uh, yeah. about culture, right? I listened and to it, it's a good one, yeah. It's it, it's um. Culture is a hard thing to define, and it's a hard thing to build, and it it definitely starts top down, and it starts with like core cultural pillar people, and and over the years we've had like original folks stick around for a long time, and then we've had them leave too. Um, and, and I mean, like Jesus, if I can get more than five years out of any one person, I would consider that a success. And and I say that just simply as like people want to learn more and do more and spread and spread out and try different things, and especially engineers right that constantly want new challenges like if they're good they're sharpening the axe all the time um so i think we've done a good job of of making it interesting and keeping it interesting at different points throughout dmax life cycle and then yeah what's you know, something you was, learned i guess like so let's like, say someone yeah. left like a low moment they left and you learned yep. oh we need to incorporate this now into oh yeah i mean like we've had people leave because we weren't providing enough training and support right like and then so that was years ago and then we sort of created an education budget that people could grab and and use ad hoc like there's like 60 grand a year that we allocate to that so people can grab up to two thousand dollars at a time first come first serve to go and spend it on a course or a class or something it doesn't even have to be related to what we do just like use it to get better um it's like continuous learning and development is something that like i believe in um you know we want to we want to encourage that and you know you think like those lessons from DMAC. So DMAC was a team built around like having fun and building cool shit, right? That was the that was the original thing. Like I started the company because I wanted to have fun and build cool shit. That was it. Like that's the engineer in me. It's what I like to do. Pila is built around a very different culture. Pila is we are committed to a waste free future. So when you think of the people we're recruiting now, that's the core thing that we're galvanizing around. Um, you know, it's everyday products without everyday waste. So I think it's going to create a very different culture, which ultimately is why we separated the two. Like, it's a big reason why we separated the two companies is culturally they're going to be different. You know, Pila is going to look like Patagonia, man. People are going to bleed this company 
because they believe in the mission. Yeah. Right. Um, same roles. Like I bet you that the team structure and the roles don't yeah. look all that dissimilar, but they're there for a different reason. And I think like leaders need to recognize why your people are where they are. Um, and that's why I'm okay with people leaving because like life changes too, right? Like we've had people, we've had like really great people, even recently really great people leave because they're just moving for their family. Like they're, they're going to like buy a house far away and they just, it's for personal reasons. I, I don't like it, the leaving, but fuck man, you can't knock that. That's, right. that's good. You know, good for you for taking care of you. Yeah. What about on the flip side? Uh, Proud moment, milestone. Oh, I got a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when I first met Jeremy, the founder for Pila, you know, his, his like, look, my his dream at the time was he was still at a job. He's like, I'd love to just be employed by Pila, right? I'm like, I will do that. Like, I will make sure this company gets big enough that you can do that. And uh, he started full time in January, left his job, right? First time in seven years of him hacking on wow, that product. Really? He's, he's like, yeah, he's like, this is fucking awesome because mm. we built a business that can support him and his family and like that's, that's – I huge. always love hearing that. Yeah. That's huge. I yeah. thought you were going to say working with your wife, but I won't tell you didn't say that. No. I'm no, just, I'm like kidding. <laughs> what, yeah, no, what, what have you learned her. from working with your spouse? Because you guys started DMAP. Yeah, we worked together for six years and then retired her is what we call it. <laughs> we retired her. Uh, the business was getting bigger and she didn't like, she was, she didn't sign up for that, but we always talked about it. She's like, I don't want it to get any bigger than a certain size. And, um, we also wanted to start having kids. So like that was right around the time that we got pregnant with Olive, who's our daughter. And, um, yeah, it was just perfect timing. So it transitioned her out. We actually worked really well together because, well, we didn't work together. <laughs> uh, that's, that's why we worked well together. She was very creative and I was uh, you know, sales and engineering and, um, like nice clean lines right between the two roles. So, uh, we didn't cross paths a whole lot, Got which it. I think our marriage was, was good. It's a good, good, healthy thing. Yes. Um, Matt, thank you. This has been yeah, fantastic. Dude. Everyone should check out pilacase.com, dmacmedia.com. And I just wanted the first one to say, I really appreciate it. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and uh, I've actually got it. If they actually want to reach out to me, it's uh, mattbertulli.com. Okay, mattbertulli.com. Yeah. There's like LinkedIn, Twitter, Medium. Where all can they bullshit. find – Um, obviously, they can find the cases on your website. They can find yeah. them on Amazon too. Yeah. Um, we what just about, started on Amazon. So. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> the, your book, Anything, yeah. Anywhere, where on can Amazon. they find that? On Amazon. Is it on yeah. Audible? Uh, No. Damn. I never did that. I should have. You still can. I would listen I to I still them. can. I know. I should. I there really a million, should. million things you, I know, that you I have know, I know. You have 20 product launches today. Yeah. So, I've got some yeah. other things i got to do right yeah. now. <laughs> but uh, thank you. Everyone check it out and uh, see you on the flip side. Yeah, man. Cheers, bud. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side.